Hey, hey, hey. Check, check, check. All right. Check, check, check. I'm just, uh, I'm still getting used to this setup, friends. So this is about uh, this show here. I, but I have one story here queued up. So um, I work in the public interest, and I, I don't, I do have a part-time job, but it doesn't really pay me enough to live on. I have about a $600 deficit this month, and this is basically, this is just for my basic living expenses and some necessary uh, program costs, like my computer needs a UPS battery, so stuff like that, you know. I need about $600, so uh, if anybody is in the position uh, of making donations and you appreciate my work, uh, I appreciate uh, donations in any amount to my PayPal, uh, tinyurl.com slash donate to Bill Houston. I really st try very hard to put out quality, original content. What is that? There's a glitch there on the screen. I'm not sure what's causing that. I do quality, original content. I do research that nobody else does. So, um, And I really can't do this uh, work without your help. That's not kidding, friends. And if you want to kind of see some of the stuff that I'm that I've done with my life, my environmental. This is mostly my environmental work over the past ten years. Bill, Bill Houston's fracking resume. Just Google that. You should find a document. But um, I really uh, need donations uh, uh, in any amount. I'm very grateful for your donations. Let's get into the show here. So. This is about one of my favorite, you know, favorite like this, favorite in air quotes. This is about one of my favorite uh, companies. Uh, uh, let's call them Rogue Agents. And uh, that's XNG, Express Natural Gas. So this is XNG, Express Natural Gas. And these, these guys, and let's go through them, okay? This is John Nahill. He's like the president or the CEO, I think. This is uh, this is Seth Barry. He's the chief officer, and sometimes he credits himself as being the general counsel. And then this is Matt Smith. Matt Smith uh, is the uh, he's the VP in charge of sales. So these are this is the core XNG team right here, management team, executive team. Uh, there are a couple of board members that are implicated. Uh, this guy, Christopher Lee, um, I think that's what his name is, Christopher, Chris Lee, yes. Um, he is, uh, he made his money um, in, um, I'm not kidding, he created a pharmaceutical company in order to sell Stay Hard pills. So it's like this quasi, you know, if you were ever a kid and you looked at, you know, I'm talking about like 1970s and you looked at dirty magazines and there were ads and some of the ads in there were for like Spanish fly and these different things. Um, it was basically the same thing, you know, that the, the stuff is they've been selling this, you know, the stuff kind of quasi legitimately, you know, you know, uh, shady characters uh, for a long time. And uh, so one of the uh, board members of XNG, his name is Chris Lee, he actually has a, a Florida-based pharmaceutical company that sells uh, Stay Hard pills. I'm not kidding. And there seems to be some kind of connection with XNG's website because sometimes their website breaks and it like defaults back to some. It's like they're using a virtual private server, so there's one uh, physical box and that box actually serves uh, several different websites. It's somehow commingled with this pharmaceutical company because you, you know you're looking at the it's got the X, some of the XNG branding on it, but then the content is about you know Viagra, Cialis, these different things. So it's kind of funny that that's the level of attention to detail that these guys have when their own website is like a joke. It's like a, it's like it's it's something that you know high school kids would do. They would figure they would crack their password they would crack their you know wordpress password or something and they'd get in there and they'd screw with it and they'd make it ah let's make it you know stay hard pills that's what that's what you know this company is legitimately connected to is uh, you know stay hard pill kind of 
pharmaceutical stuff. So these guys are kind of on the sleazy side. I don't know where these guys went to school exactly. Probably uh, Rutgers or something. <laughs> you know, not not the Wharton School, that's for sure. They, these boys were Wharton School dropouts. Um, so uh, these guys are kind of sleazy. And uh, me and my buddy Craig Stevens have been working, you know, and there's an extended group. Brett's in there. Brett is... Uh, has uh, helped us out, you know, with different kinds of uh, research. And uh, Ray Kimball, uh, Craig Stevens, Vera Scroggins really uh, began the investigation. She was way ahead of us, any of us. She was, uh, you know, attending the uh, Susquehanna County uh, Planning Board and that kind of thing. So she knew this facility was coming, but none of us really uh, figured out what it was. I didn't figure it out until I actually started seeing these trucks on the road, these vehicles. It's a gas truck in, uh, being shipped in a box. Very unusual. I'd never seen anything like that before. So uh, when I saw these, these new trucks, I was very curious. I was like, what the hell is that? So, you know, we've been following these people since probably mid-2017, uh, you know, April, spring 2017, really. So coming up on three years. And... Um, uh, th this is the guy, this is the only guy I haven't met. I've met the other two. I haven't met John Nahill. And we have, uh, you know, somewhere around, I think, um, I found a lot of spurious files up on the Dropbox that I deleted. Uh, like, anyway, these temporary files. There's, I, I've cleaned up the Dropbox. So the, the Dropbox is only, quote-unquote, only about, I think it's 30 gigabytes. I've got 30 or 40 gigabytes of data just on virtual pipelines and a significant amount is about these guys and they're uh, they're um, being prone to uh, you know have have their trucks flip over and other uh, bad things happen and one of those bad things uh, just happened and that's what we're going to talk about so let's see if I can make a transition here Okay, so here we go. This is a very interesting uh, slide here. So a lot of my work um, is similar. I know I consider myself a journalist. I'm an indie, indie media journalist. I don't work for a paycheck, but I do investigation work and I publish my findings on the internet. So that is, um, you know, that's what, uh, a, pub that's what a, a journalist does. So... Um, and a lot of journalists I have found um, one of the ways, a great way to get stories is what it's called these uh, Freedom of Information Act requests or um, they're sometimes called Right to Know, Open Records there's several different the state laws are all slightly different and there's a federal law the federal law is called FOIA Freedom of Information Act and um so you're just entitled, the public is entitled to know what's going on with government. And very often you can get these records for free. So I pull down these records and I sort through them and organize them. And then I put them up and make them available to people. I'm kind of like a little mini uh, WikiLeaks, only it's not leaks. I'm getting, sometimes I do get leaks. Sometimes I do get leaks. And some of it is already up on the Dropbox, the leaked information. Uh, but other times, like this is this is public information. I I got this from a FOIA request in Massachusetts. So let's talk about this picture here. Once again, we're talking about XNG Express Natural Gas. That's the name of the company that we're talking about here. So here's my under here's what I've been able to put together. Okay. So I really started researching. Let me see if I have a slide on that. Nope, I don't. I de might have one coming up. So I started researching something completely different, and it led me down this road. And sometimes you, this is the way you. There's this kind of process of discovery, um, and you don't always. You find sometimes things that you don't expect to find, and that's kind of what I ha what happened here. So I was um, I was invest. Started out investigating why. So for the longest time. And there's a slide coming up on this. For the longest time, uh, XNG, um, 
the, the Commonwealth of Mass Massachusetts has a website, mass.gov, and part of there is uh, the DPU, the Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities. And you could get on there and there was a list of all of the registered and licensed uh, public utilities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, gas providers and uh, providers of electricity. So here's my question. Does XNG have operating authority within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? I'm giving you the background first, and here's what's interesting. On XNG's website, they tell you that they have been delivering gas to a place called Barnhard Manufacturing in Coleraine, Massachusetts. You see that? Barnhard Manufacturing in Coleraine, Massachusetts. Okay? And then, so the question is, let's, this is mass.gov. So here is gas supplier. This is, uh, it's a listing of all of the authorized gas suppliers in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So let's go to gas suppliers. Gas supplier and retail agent. Let's begin with this one. So what you have to do is you have to type in like the first letter of the name of the company. So we know it's X. So let me type in X. There's X. And look what comes up. It says approved list. I'm doing this live right now. Here's the approved list. Retail agent. There's just one. It's called Zoom. X-O-O-M. Zoom Energy, Massachusetts. Okay. And there's a website. Prior to last week, if you went to the website, this is what you would have seen. Okay. See, it says pending list. Do you see the one that says pending list? I did the same thing. I put in an X. Do you see the X right here? So all I did, I went there, I typed in an X, and now we see the pending list. Gas supplier, express natural gas. Pending. Pending. This. So do you see, do you see my question? Okay. My question is, I just showed you that... Express Natural Gas is operating as a, a retail agent, apparently, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And um, they're going to Barnhard Manufacturing in Coleraine, Massachusetts. Um, but it looks like they lack operating authority. So I just did a, a series of FOIL requests with with Massachusetts, and I was looking into this, okay? And what I discovered was they don't have operating authority. In fact, if you go there and look now, all record of that has been removed. All record that XNG made an application, and it was 2012 when they did that, has been removed from the website. Okay, now let me go back up to the top. All right, so what are we looking at? What are we looking at here? All right. I did a FOIL request, FOIA request, open records request, open records law in Massachusetts, I think is what it's called, with um, the Massachusetts State Fire Marshal, and this is what they gave me back. Now, I've redacted, they sent me an unredacted photograph, but I mainly altered this guy's face, or gal. I think you can see it doesn't I'm pretty sure you can see it's not a gal it's a guy I, I will say that much it's a man um, and what he's doing here is he is and, and I'm, I'm having to figure this all out as I go okay because it, it's just a very interesting story how this all came all how this all came together but here we have a guy He's operating, uh, that's a quantum. You can tell because the quantum has the three tanks. Here's one, here is two, and number three is over that way. That's number three. Two, one. One, two, three. Maybe if I point backwards. That's one, that's two, that's three. So, and then this hose here, what he's doing is he's actually filling up the tractor. Okay, let's do some basic, let's talk trucks, basic trucking, okay? I don't know. Everybody's at different levels, okay? So I know for many people, I'm going to be stating the obvious here, but a tractor trailer, there's two parts to it. There's a tractor, and then there's a trailer, okay? The trailer is what's carrying the cargo, and the chassis, and the, the box, or the tank, whatever it is. And then there is the tractor. The tractor is the power unit. So the tractor takes fuel. It requires fuel to run it. 
Well, XNG tends to use, they do have a few uh, bi-fuel and they have a few uh, diesel tractors, but the vast majority of XNG's fleet is powered by natural gas. So they operate these drop yards and they used to have one in Vestal, that's been since uh, shut down. They operate one in Sydney, New York, up on I-88. And now they have operated them in uh, at least two other locations that I know of, three other locations that I know of. But there's, uh, uh, there's two in Mass. Uh, one's called Chicopee. They were using a, um, uh, a truck stop in Chicopee, Mass, uh, as a drop yard very dangerous it's uh, lots of other vehicles nearby houses nearby uh, not a fenced in area just a very bad place to be doing this um, it wasn't controlled access and then there's a better drop yard that they were using in Palmer Massachusetts this photograph was taken in Palmer Massachusetts let me cut to the chase okay let me just tell you really quickly and then we can get into more of the details okay this here is a 3600 PSI line. Actually, that's not exactly true. Go this way. That's not exactly true. Uh, these pressures can vary widely. If you look at that, uh, that tank, that gauge right there, the gauge is actually indicating just slightly below 3000 PSI. But this can be as high as 4500 PSI, 4500 PSI. But they commonly call this a 3600 PSI application, even though it can be a lot more due to thermal compensation. So he's just operating the valves. So he's filling. What's he doing? What is this guy doing? He's doing, uh, he's filling the tractor with the lading. So you know the job truck driver very common job you are, i'm probably there's probably some some truck drivers in the in the uh in the chat right now but chances are you know a truck driver somewhere so what i want you to do is go tell one of your truck driver friends that there's a company called express natural gas and they haul gas in these very exotic trailers and they are actually siphoning off, not really siphoning, you know, in the way we normally would think of it, but they're, they're taking from the lading and they're filling their tractors with it. WTF. Tell that to a trucker and see what, the, see, what, see what kind of a face they make. If you tell a trucker that these guys are taking the lading, because the lading is, is sacred. That's what, you're, that's what you're, you're, you're transporting. You're transporting somebody else's product and you're supposed to leave with a certain amount of product and when you get there you give the customer all that product so the fact that they are removing from the lading that somebody else owns is a little bit weird it's just a little bit weird in terms of the accounting and then there's there's the taxes are there are they paying their proper proper taxes because um, Natural gas tractors, natural gas, um, the, the trucking industry has to pay taxes, road taxes, and quite significant road taxes. So the first thing is that this is, in the, in the, in the military, we had the term SAT. They're satisfactory and unsatisfactory. We'd call it SAT and unsat. This is unsat. This is unsat for about a dozen different reasons, and we're going to go over these. So the first one is, the state isn't getting their proper taxation, but that's not my biggest concern. My biggest concern is public safety and the safety of the workers. This, is, this man is, I'm not sure he fully understands how much he is putting his life in jeopardy right now. And this is the craziest story, friends. I don't even know if I'm going to get into all the angles of it. It's probably going to take more than one show to tell you all the angles of this story. This is huge. So basically, let's go back. I just want to show you this one more time. That these guys have blood on their hands. There have been drivers that have died. And there have been drivers that have been 
severely injured and traumatized. And there have been drivers that have suffered extreme trauma, including severe brain injury. That's what happened. We had a driver. We. <laughs> there was a driver. An XNG driver. That suffered a very severe injury. And it was the day after this picture was taken. This picture was taken December 4th, 2019. In Palmer, Massachusetts at an XNG drop yard. The next day... In Lebanon, New Hampshire, a female, 46-year-old female XNG driver was doing this exact same thing. I mean, the setup was the same. She wasn't filling the tractor. She was actually connecting up the hoses from... Uh, she dropped off a trailer to a hospital because the hospital uses natural gas. Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center in Lebanon, New Hampshire. And you can look it up because there's newspaper articles about this. So she was hooking up the hoses and she pulled the valve. And this connection, I don't know exactly what happened, whether that broke. It could be the, the fitting broke or it wasn't, it wasn't fully seated and it blew loose. And guess what happened? Let me get my... There we go. The hose went bam. It went poof. And it hit this woman in the face. And I'm not going to get too graphic. But I know a little bit about this woman's condition. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know her name. She suffered a traumatic head injury. And if... I was told by, um, I got a communication from one of the first responders that was there at the scene, and this person said, if this woman had suffered this injury at some place other than a hospital that had a trauma unit, she would have certainly died. So this woman, her injury was caused by the negligence and the quest for profits by the executive staff and board of Express Natural Gas. And I put these guys behind bars because I think that if you know, if you've been informed about a problem, a safety problem that's in affecting the safety of your workers, and if you don't take action... And in fact, you you keep on operating, even after you know that you have a problem. You don't try to fix the problem. Um, I believe this is criminal negligence. It could be homicide. Um, these boys need to be shut down. Express natural gas. They are operating in an unsafe and illegal manner. And we're going to get into a lot of details here. And um, I'm glad you're sticking with us, friends. Once again, I make all this content available for free. Oh, that's the wrong one. So if you appreciate my work... Um, Donate to Bill Houston, tinyurl.com slash donate to Bill Houston. That takes you to my PayPal. Okay, so where were we? Let's go back to, to this guy. Okay, so what do we have here? First of all, um, apparently there was a whistleblower. Uh, I was told by um, one of the fire chiefs in the area that... Um, there was a whistleblower complaint. And we already know that because there was an OSHA complaint. This was already reported in the newspaper about the Lebanon, New Hampshire incident. That there was an uh, OSHA complaint because of that. Or maybe it was one of them seemed to imply that it was a prior 
OSHA complaint. This is my understanding and my belief that this OSHA complaint happened weeks, days prior, weeks prior. I believe it was weeks, maybe even months prior when the OSHA complaint happened. I'm still trying to put together all the pieces, friends, okay? I have I don't have everything completely sorted out yet, but XNG had prior notice of this problem and all they have to do is if you're in business for 3 years doing high pressure hoses, high pressure uh, fittings like this, you would think you'd figure out how to do it. You'd call in, you know, somebody that does high pressure hoses. Anybody that looks at this, anybody that works, anybody from the military that has worked with high pressure, um, anybody that has uh, from the oil and gas industry that has worked with high pressure hoses would look at this setup right here and say, this is completely unsat. And I don't blame this guy. I don't blame this guy. That's why I've disguised his identity. He's a victim, just like the rest of us are, uh, from uh, the crimes of the people running Express Natural Gas. We're all victims. He's a victim. He hasn't been given proper safety instruction, or he hasn't been given proper gear. So, first of all, there's PPE. PPE is uh, uh, headgear. It's the helmet. It's uh, the hard hat. Uh, ear protection, because uh, if there's a break, that can make very loud noises, even explosions. And also uh, eye protection. He's wearing a ball cap. He's not wearing a hard hat. He doesn't wear. Gla he doesn't doesn't have protective eyewear. Not that a piece of. Not that a plastic. Plastic goggles like is what depic it's depicted here. Not like that would have helped this this guy. It wouldn't. When this comes loose at three thousand psi, there's a calculation on one of these websites, uh, American Ironworks, that makes the safety device that we're going to talk about. This it's a whip stop or a whip sock, or, uh, you know, a, a hose restraint. There's a lot of different names for this thing. Whip stop, whip check. The company that manufactures these has a website, and it says at, some, at 5,000 PSI, and that's what this can be up to, 5,000 approximately, it's like 35,000 pounds of force when it comes loose in a uh, catastrophic failure of the fitting, the hose, whatever. If you have a device like this and it breaks, guess what? The hose doesn't go flying. The hose stays pretty much, in, you know, the gas comes shooting out everywhere, but the hose stays attached. It doesn't hit anybody. So this woman that suffered this terrible injury would have been saved by, I got a price quote from this guy from American Ironworks. He was a really nice guy. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't have a financial connection to American Ironworks, trust me, okay? But I really like this guy's videos. He's got videos that show, and I'm going to try to, I'll try to show one in a second, of what this looks like uh, when it comes flying loose. In fact, let's go do that right now. Look at the force. But with the whip sock, with the whip sock, it, it keeps it attached. That's called the whip sock. So this equipment here uh, costs approximately, he gave me a quote. Uh, oh, so this guy's name is Steve Beeson, B-E-E-S-O-N. If you just go to the Steve Beeson, let me show you his name, because uh, he was super helpful. Steve Beeson, he's with American Ironworks. He manufactures these safety devices. So, um, uh, you know, he's got 
I mean, the website, the videos, it's a terrific operation. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not plugging the guy. I'm just saying that he was very helpful. Uh, and he manufactures this exact device. And basically it's between a hundred and maybe $150, $160 per hose. That's the cost. So just as a recap, okay, these guys, XNG, they had prior notice. Okay, so once again, there's no PPE. This poor guy, no PPE, no whip stop. And also, notice if you watch, I got this from an actual XNG video that's out there. It's this for the Mannheim filling station when it opened. You want to watch that really quick? Bump, 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 bump. It's got this happy music. I want you to hear this. I can hear it. Uh, Direct Energy is one of the largest suppliers of natural gas and electricity in North America uh, to businesses and homeowners. And we are the largest unregulated supplier of both natural gas and electricity in New York State. To so did you hear what he said? He said, we are the largest unregulated supplier of natural gas in New York State. And he's not kidding. Uh, because one of, the th uh, one of the things that I've learned about this is that uh, I've used this maxim all the time. I call it Houston's maxim. Basically, it is... Uh, Innovation circumvents regulation. So if you want to, if you want to, if you're involved in some kind of dangerous activity and you want to actually avoid regulation, what do you do? You innovate. You create something new that nobody's ever heard of before, like ultra high pressure type four CNG carbon fiber composite virtual pipeline tube trailers, which is what these things are. And you know, you go to the regulators and you say, "Well, hey, do you regulate these things?" And they're like, "What type four? Say it again. CNG virtual? It's like that's not in my book. I don't know what that is. I don't regulate that." The law is very specific. The regulators are specifically empowered by the statutes. So if the statutes are silent on uh, high volume horizontal hydrofracking, for example, or you know, ultra high pressure type four CNG virtual pipeline tube trailers which I like to call bomb trucks, um, they're unregulated. So he's not kidding when he says unregulated. Now, here's the part that I want you to see. Gather with our we don't partners. Have to listen to that guy anymore. Let's just watch what happens here. I'm going to show you, show you this guy filling up. I want you to see the procedure. I don't think he already did it. Yeah, here we go. Look at that. Do you see what he just did? He's taking a cable. He's taking an electrical cable. It looks like it looks like a jumper cable for a car, right? It's like this caliper thing, and it's got a wire. Now look at look watch what he does. And he connects it up to and he makes a really good connection. Now what is that for? What he's doing is that is he's equalizing the electrical charge between the equipment that he's connecting to and the trailer itself. And the reason why he does that is to avoid, because just the connecting that up can cause, there's, there can be an electrical differential between a, a, a potential difference. The electrical potential of the two different pieces of equipment can potentially be different, and that would cause a spark or an arc when he connects up. You know, you want to avoid the spark from happening when there's natural gas escaping. So they always do that, right? Uh, well, do they always do it? This guy doesn't have... Here's the connection right here. There's no cable. There's no ground. It's to establish a common ground, I would say, between the two different pieces of equipment. So it is a ground strap. It's not necessarily earth ground, but it's it's forming a common making sure they're at the same poten electrical potential. So this guy doesn't have it here. It's, we already said that this is violating the, um, it's violating, you know, when you set up a natural gas filling station, there has to be uh, uh, fire suppression equipment and, and it should be, you know, there's Jersey barriers set up and it has to be taxed properly. And 
has to be, you know, you got to go to local zoning and make sure that this is it's a permitted land use. So this is un this is unsat, like a dozen different ways. And there was a uh, there was a complaint to OSHA. There was also a complaint to the fire marshal. The investigation happened. The fire marshal came out, and the very next day, the very next day, a woman in Lebanon, New Hampshire suffered a severe, traumatic, life-threatening head injury because she was doing the exact same thing this guy was doing. She wasn't filling a tractor, but she was connecting up a receptacle ex to a receptacle at a hospital exactly like this. She was discharging the gas, and this thing blew off and hit her in the face, hit her in the head. So that's the story. That's the short story. There's a lot more to this story, but uh, I wanted to give you a brief heads up uh, about this particular story because I, you know, how many more people have to get hurt? How many people, more people have to die before XNG is shut down? These guys have blood on their hands, and I just wanted to... Here's a picture of Craig Stevens. He has been amazing in his advocacy for safe, public safety regarding these vehicles and in his own independent research. I'm a research guy, but Craig is a research guy all on his own, and he's come up with a lot of uh, amazing things having to do with uh, the safety of these trailers. So we, we have been trying to get these things shut down for public safety of the trailers, uh, in addition, as, in terms of bad actors, industrial bad actors, it's hard to it's hard to beat these guys. Maybe WPX Energy. Remember WPX? They were about as bad in terms of technical errors and in terms of disregard for public safety. And uh, they care only about profits, basically. This that's the last time I saw some some and you know OFFUs. <laughs> if you know what that stands for, oil field F-ups, let's just say that, you know, living close to the uh, number one natural gas production area in the country, uh, you know, I've seen quite a few OFFUs in the past 10 years or so, uh, but these boys take the cake. These boys are exceptional uh, fuck-ups in an industry of fuck-ups. You know, OFFU is a web page that's actually put on by industry. So they, they make fun of themselves, you know. Um, but, the I mean, the oil and gas industry, I do, the workers really do have, uh, um, uh, they care about safety. I think a lot of them do. And uh, do a few companies do. Like, I don't want to promote any company that's doing drilling and fracking. But I'm just saying that they're not all as bad as the worst of them. Uh, these guys, these guys are some of the worst, and uh, these, you know, I want to see this company shut down. So, like I said, Craig and I have been working on shutting them down, basically on uh, issues with the trailers. But this particular company is violating a lot of laws, a lot of rules, and we've been trying to get this company shut down specifically. Now, this is Ron Barton. Ron is a former New York State uh, DOT. Um, uh, commercial vehicle inspector, and this guy knows his stuff. This guy is super smart, and he comes from the railroads, so he knows uh, tech. And his real specialty is understand is how to do what he calls uh, level one inspections, which is like you crawl all over the truck and you know you note everything that's wrong. Um, but he really understands these USDOT special permits, and he knows how he knows how to trace them back to their legal roots and he knows how to write and he was a teacher uh he was a certified teacher by the dot to teach this program called mix app program uh so he was training other people how to do these level one inspections and uh, a big part of it was understanding these us dot special permits that's his expertise and ron looked at this and he said oh you know he saw evidence of these trailers leaked uh, we've got at least one. He has seen the evidence of at least two now. The Exeter crash and also the uh, Exeter was a Quantum XNG. The other one was, I think, I-88, which we, uh, we now believe it was um, 
The Central Bridge crash, that one was NG Advantage, and that was with a, um, I believe that was a, a Quantum also. But the, um, the Binghamton fatal crash that just happened, um, Fenton area, on, also on I-88, uh, that was a, a Titan, a 40-foot Titan. So we have examples of both trailer types, both primary trailer types that are being used, uh, Hexagon, Lincoln, and Quantum Fuel Systems. Those are the two manufacturers. Both of them have leaked in a crash. Ron Barton, who used to work for the New York State Department of Transportation, writing violations for these trucks and understanding how to go in and dig through the special permit, says that they are not supposed to leak in a crash. That's a violation. They're violating their special permit. Um, we have, he has informed the USDOT on this, and he's also working through his congressman, and so far, no action has been taken. So it's very uh, unusual. Um, we believe that DOT understands that these are leaking. And the very first crash, I have a slide on this. Tragic case here. This was a 29-year-old female driver. Uh, she crashed at February 21, 2017. It was just after they opened this facility at Forest Lake. Just after they opened. And I believe that there was a mechanical problem with this trailer. Um, and there were, you know, it's a, every one of these stories has got its own unique details to it. But she suffered really bad road, road rash, loss of uh, nerve function in her hand. She suffered a traumatic head, a, a, a life-threatening head injury in, during this crash. Um, and uh, so these, these trailers have been rolling over from the outset. So here's Albany. Um, this, for, this is Forest Lake, 221, 2017, right? Then there was uh, 9 12, 2017. This was in Hartwick. That was on Route 205 in Hartwick. And that's an amazing one. This thing, I don't know how this guy lived, but he did. Uh, <laughs> we call him, uh, should I say what his name is? Brett, uh, if you're still in there. or uh, Anyway, Roy, Roy the stunt driver. This was Roy. He was reaching for an energy drink or something in, a, in his cooler as he's driving this heavy hazmat vehicle. And psh, went upside down. This one. Uh, I'm not sure if this one leaked. This one definitely leaked. The point is, these have been leaking. This one leaked. The Albany one leaked. Exeter leaked. This is a violation of the special permit. We've been telling the DOT uh, about uh, the problems. We've been telling FERC that this is interstate commerce and natural gas, and they don't have a certificate of public convenience and, and necessity for the ground-based facilities, which is also illegal. Uh, and it, there was no NEPA review. There was no uh, a FERC jurisdiction, federal jurisdiction, because these things are starting in New York, are starting in Pennsylvania, and ending up in New York, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, different places. This is the Binghamton fatal crash right here. This is another tragic case. Uh, I have a lot, a lot of new information about this case, but I'm just not prepared to, to put it all out there just yet. But um, how many more drivers are going to be hurt? This is unsafe equipment. It's unsafe because they roll over. And then here's the other thing. We haven't seen what I would call a, uh, a catastrophic failure in terms of a fire or an explosion yet. And I don't want it. I don't say yet because I want this to happen. I'm just saying that if you look at the quantities of gas involved and you look at uh, vehicles like this trash truck, this garbage truck that uh, have the same kind of tanks. So what happened was that this vehicle had a chassis fire. This trash truck had a chassis fire. It wasn't a load fire like you commonly see. With This was like a hydraulic line that was leaking and it leaked oil onto something hot, probably like a muffler or something, and part of the exhaust and it, uh, the oil caught on fire. And the burning of the hydraulic oil 
eventually in the on, in the chassis eventually hit the the tanks on the roof and they're mounted sideways like that like this way like horizontally and they have pressure relief devices actually we should point it like it how do i point that way so there it is the pressure relief devices actually point sideways they don't point up in this particular design this particular this is a i think it's a mcneilis trash truck it so in in order to prevent an explosion these things by design vent the gas if the tanks are sitting in a fire eventually the, the pressure inside is going to build up and it's going to explode so they build in these pressure relief devices and that's what this is that's what we see the pressure relief this is normal operation there was a chassis fire the tanks got hot the pressure relief devices opened venting the gas and it catches on fire and it turns into a really giant blowtorch there's a house was a house here you can see what happened it's at least 50 feet away 55 feet maybe 60 feet completely destroyed this house and this is normal operation and these are much smaller tanks than what we're talking about in these virtual pipeline tube trailers the tanks in these cng trash trucks are much smaller capacity so all i'm saying is we haven't seen a catastrophic fire from one of these quantums or a titan uh, or it's happened and they've covered it up i'm not sure which but we haven't i haven't seen a catastrophic fire from a quantum and that's going to be bad that could kill dozens of people that could cause uh million you know tens or hundreds of million dollars in property damage i want to avoid that scenario from happening because i want to get these off the road because they're unsafe and the companies are like xng are unsafe more because of their screw-ups their technical screw-ups and their contempt for following the law and providing basic safety features to you know a hundred dollars a hundred and fifty dollars if you get the good one a hundred and fifty dollars per hose per filling hose that's what it would cost xng so a woman lost her face had her face blown off because xng wouldn't spend 150 dollars on a whip check and they were told about it before they you know they should know they should already know they should have a safety guy that looks at their equipment and you know make sure that it's satisfactory but they are goof ups they're just doofuses they don't know what the hell they're doing xng and they're putting people at risk and there is a certain particular failure mode of these trucks you know the tanks can explode just by based on the pressure when you charge gas at 3600 to, to 5000 psi you put it in a tank i don't care what kind of tank it is that tank can explode if the tank structurally fails they're under a lot of tension at that kind of um, pressure so it's like it's a battery you take any tank that's charged at 5000 psi and it's that's got potential energy stored in that because of the pressure and it's there's tension there's ba a balance between the pressure and the and the structure of the tank and if something throws that out of balance like physical damage or force external force of some kind these tanks can fail and leak out the gas and if they so there's a mechanical explosion and that's bad enough and that can just the mechanical explosion can can kill you much smaller tanks than this have killed the driver or uh complete have exploded and uh, either kill the driver or uh, cause severe burns or severe trauma uh, the uh, guy that drove the tractor the CNG tractor in button willow California he's still alive but he is um, I'm trying to think of the legal uh, definition he is incompetent he's brain dead um, 
so his son is ha handling all of his, his affairs in terms of there's a lawsuit going on. So a lot of this you can find if you get on Pacer and look it up. These tanks are extremely dangerous. This kind of pressure, we should not be, in my opinion, we should not be transporting any kind of gas uh, in any kind of bulk operation at pressures above 1,000 PSI. It's too dangerous. You know, above 300 PSI, it's too dangerous. It's, it can't, the, the risk of that, the risk of injury and harm to the general public, the drivers and, and operators, you know, the yard guys and the drivers, and to the general public, cannot be mitigated. It's an unmitigatable potential disaster. So besides the mechanical force of the explosion, there's also a third kind of potential disaster. And that's when, so we talked about the fire disaster. That hasn't happened yet. It's going to happen. Statistically, it's going to happen. There's a mechanical explosion of one of the tanks from a failure where there isn't an ignition of the gas. And then the worst one is, this is when you get into the 11 Moabs. Natural gas is explosive if it's in a mixture of air between 5% and 15%. Natural gas is explosive if it's mixed with air between 5% and 15%. If you calculate the explosive potential of a 53-foot Titan with 11 tons, or actually it's 12 tons, if that fails and causes an explosion under quote-unquote ideal conditions, it's going to have the force of 11 Moabs and a Moab, mother of all bombs, or it's got another name. This is the most powerful nuclear weapon in the U.S. arsenal. So my question is, how many more people have to get hurt? How many more people have to die? Uh, that's it. I'm going to wrap this up and uh, maybe try to edit, the, edit this down a little bit to remove some of the... Uh, some of the some of the uh, technical glitches and okay if i don't see any more anything else in the chat i'm going to call this a wrap and so thanks a lot everybody for tuning in make sure that you go to uh, tinyurl.com uh donate to bill houston tinyurl.com slash donate to to bill houston and uh, donations are gratefully received in any amount. I need to raise about $600 this month uh, just to meet my, you know, my basic expenses, food, uh, my storage shed, uh, my, my phone. If you, if you want to know what I spend the money on, I'm happy to itemize it if you're willing to. If you, uh, if you're, you know, want to make a donation, I'm happy to go over my finances. I, I assure you that I live very modestly and, uh, um, I put all of this money to good use. So, um, okay, friends, thanks a lot for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Bill Houston Podcast. Over and out. Oh, be sure to subscribe. I almost forgot. Be sure to subscribe uh, to YouTube and click the bell, the notification bell, and uh, so you get an alert every time I go live or produce a new video. Okay, friends. See you later.